okay. This is a story Jesus uh, had that he told in order to, to tell them about a truth that he was trying to get them to understand, okay? I remember when I was a little girl, Dad would come in and he'd have, give me a story. How many of you remember Daddy coming in and telling you stories or Mom? Huh? Any of you remember that? Nobody had your mom and dad? Okay, well, I hope so. That was always wonderful, and I loved it. Okay, would you like to stand for the word? And he spake many things unto them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went forth to sow. And when he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside, and the fowls came and devoured them up. Some fell upon stony places where there had uh, not much earth, and forthwith they sprung up because they had no uh, deepness of earth. And when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprung up and choked them, but others fell unto the good ground and brought forth fruit, some a hundredfold, some sixtyfold, and some thirtyfold. You may be seated. I am going to speak today on, let me get the name of this over here. Let me look up here. And what am I speaking on? I forgot how I put it, and I don't know where I, what I did. Oh, plant yourselves in bloom. So you want to plant yourself and then bloom. Do you know that you have to work on the soil? And I know most of us here understand that, don't we? You've got to make sure the earth is real good and it's got to have nutrients and it's got to have all kinds of things. But we need to plant ourselves, then bloom. You know, I, I heard, you know, bloom where you're planted. Well, let's plant ourselves first and worry about what, what's going to go in for that plant and all the different things, okay? So let's, let's be concerned about all of that first, okay? But plant yourself and bloom. The first thing I want to talk about is bird food. We're not even talking about bird food today, are we? But you know what happened? Behold, a sower went forth to sow. And when he sowed, some seeds fell by the wayside, and the fowls came and devoured them. Yes. They became bird seed. Now let's, let's look over here in the other part of, um, of the scripture in verse 19. When anyone that heareth the word of the kingdom and understand it not, then cometh the wicked one and catcheth away which was sown in his heart. This is he which receives seed by the wayside. Do you know that the devil has come to steal, deceive, and destroy? And you've heard it before. And, and now just, just open your ears real good. God cannot, okay? God cannot tell a lie. Right. Okay, amen. To I want to hear a big amen on that. Amen. He can't tell a lie. But, you know what? The devil cannot tell the truth. Amen. Now think about that. And I talk to, the, to my kids when in class on Wednesday night. I don't like to be around somebody that lies all the time. How many just loves that? Do you just love that and you think, oh, I just love to be around somebody that lies because you can't believe a thing they say. And even when they say something, you're thinking... Now, is it true? I don't even like to be around that. But you know what happens? The sower is out there and he's sowing the seeds. Now, I know he's sowing the seeds. And, and back in Bible days, they had a little pouch and they would sow the seeds. But some of those seeds fell on hard ground and they were laying on top of the ground. They didn't have any depth to them. And what happened? The cute little birdies came and they became bird food. I don't want what I am trying to get from God to become bird food. 
I want my life to be planted in the soil where it can grow. Yes. Do you realize that there are some people that have got saved years and years and years and years ago? I mean, I'm not going to tell you how many years I've been saved because I've been saved three years long or three years shorter than what my age is. So you can kind of figure that out. But I'm not telling you how old I am. But you know what? There are some people that are still not even growing. Do you realize when we plant the seed, I got in and I, I looked online and I thought, oh my goodness, I thought this, this is, it, it was so neat because the seed, when the seed, you know, like if you've seen any kind of beans or anything and, and the seed is planted in the ground, do you know that seed, it, 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 the, the covering on the seed is able to breathe? And it, it's just, there's so many, and it's able to receive water and all of that. But then it finally comes off because a root comes and a shoot comes, and then it's not needed anymore. Yeah. But do you know the Lord protects us? When we're young in Him, He protects us. We have a covering on us, and He protects us. But folks, we have to be the one to be planted where we need to be planted. So don't expect God to bless you and to just do many wonderful things for you if you're just becoming birdseed. Do you want to be birdseed? I really don't want to be eaten by, by a bird. But I want my life planted. I want it planted so that we can, I, I can do things for the Lord. Number two, shallow ground. Hmm. And let's back up on that one, Ken. You did you had that picture there, didn't you? And I was gonna uh, on the first picture. Kind of looks menacing, doesn't it? Those crows and the blackbirds, and there come. And they're just plucking up the seeds. Now, how many think that looks happy? It's not so happy, is it? But I want you to think about that in, in, in your mind. Thank you, Ken. Okay, now we're going to go to verse 5 and 6. Now the sower, when he was sowing, some fell upon stony places where there had not much earth. And forthwith they sprung up, because they had no deepness of earth. And when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away. Okay, here we go. So the sowers sowing the seed, and some are bird food. But then there's others here that said some fell um, in stony places. Now, you know what? Sometimes I'm not too smart with some stuff, okay? Because I don't understand everything. But I know when you put rock, if you want drainage, you use rock. Because the water goes down through the rock. And you think about that. If the Lord's trying to do something in your life and you land in a stony place, you know what? If, if you even can grow a root to try to even get grounded, there's no way you're going to stay that way. Have you ever seen something that's grown with around rocks and, and stones and they're just awful, you know, they're just kind of all, they don't look too good, do they? Because the water that comes through, it just goes right down through the rocks and right down through everything. But we need soil in order for that to be good for us to grow. Then verse 20, But he that received the seed unto stony places, the same as he that heareth the word, and soon, anon is soon, with joy receiveth it. Yet hath he not rooted himself, but dureth for a while, and when tribulation or persecution arises because of the word, and, and by, he is offended. Do you know the devil, like I told you, he's out to kill, deceive, and destroy. 
And you know what, I even hate to say this, but you know where sometimes we can get hurt the most? In church. Sure. Sister so-and-so just, she said something awful to me. I'm not going back anymore. No. Well, you love the pastor. I know, but sister so-and-so is there, so I'm not going back anymore. Well, you know that pastor, he shook everybody else's hand Sunday, but he missed me, and I saw him looking. He was looking right at me, and he said, I'm not shaking their hand. You know what? We allow the devil to come in and pluck it away from us, guys. We allow him to steal our joy. We allow him to take away so much. But you know what it is now? It's time to say, no, devil. I am going to, I'm not going to go on the stones. I'm not, I'm not going to grow myself there. But I am going to go into the depth, depth of the word, to the depth of the spirit. I hate the devil. I just hate him. I heard somebody say, you know, we can get hurt. Well, I've been hurt at Walmart before, but I still go back. Sure. You know what? It's time to remember that we are not perfect. Yes. And as my husband calls it, we don't need stinking thinking. <laughs> now, do we? Right. Do we need stinking thinking? No, because most of the things that go in your brain are not even true anyway with that junk. Remember, the devil cannot tell the truth. He can only tell a lie. So the stones. You know what? Stones are hard to rock, or walk on and everything, aren't they? You just, I mean, they're, they're, they're just bothersome. I know Catherine, she'd love to get our, our parking lot paved because sometimes you go out there and you, you know, you, you're trying to, to walk and your foot turns and everything. I don't like, I don't like rocks like that. I don't, I don't want that. But I want to be planted in the good soil that Jesus Christ provides for us. Praise God. Okay, let's go on down here. And like I told my husband, I wasn't going to speak long. There's just a, a few things that I really wanted to talk to you about. Number seven, and some fell among thorns, and the and a thorn sprung up and choked them. Needles that hurt. That's something else. Sometimes we, we actually plant ourselves among things that hurt us. Yeah, I know I shouldn't be hanging around these people, but, you know, <laughs> it's, it, it's not going to hurt me. But are they needles? Are they needles that will prick you? When I, get, when I first start getting... Uh, a whole new batch of pins, and I pin somebody, I, I always tell them, I say, now be careful when you take that garment off, because they'll hurt if you get stuck. Needles that hurt. The devil wants you to be around things and people that are going to hurt you. But that's not what God wants. He wants us to land and to be into the ground with a great, beautiful flowers. Now, look at those thorns. How many this past week went out and planted thorns? Did anybody? Huh? Did you plant thorns? I mean, the big old... Ones that, that are, that, that are kind of uh, with like a tree, you know, and it's got the thorns on it. How many's got thorns in their garden that they're real proud of? I have two. I'm getting ready to plant. Oh, okay. <laughs> but you know what? The thorns are hard. They are hard, and they will hurt you. So they are needles that hurt. Let's look over in the other part here. He also that received seed among the thorns is he that heareth the word and the care of the world and the deceitfulness of riches choked the word and he became unfruitful. Unfruitful. Does that sound like what God wants us to have? 
No. Let me just tell you a little thing that happened to me, and I, I'm not going to be much longer. We were somewhere, and it was the beginning of our ministry, and I was raised to, you know, you, you, you listen to the pastor, and you, you, you try to do good, and you try to do good for the Lord, you know, that was, and I, I went into the ministry, I thought, this is going to be a cinch, this is going to be wonderful. But then all of a sudden I found out that people don't respect the ministry sometimes. And we went to the church and and I'll just tell you it was it was an awful experience. It was one of our first experiences at a church. And it hurt me so bad. I mean it hurt me. I was hurt. And I kept on I get down to pray and the Lord would say, He'd say, You gotta forgive those people. And I thought, Now Lord, no, I don't, because I talked to sister so and so or brother so and so, and they said, Well, you've got a right to feel the way you do. I thought, now Lord, see, they told me I've got a right to feel the way I feel. But do you know what? The Lord dealt with me and dealt with me. And one Sunday, I got down. I never got down to pray. I got down to argue with God. I'd be down there praying, God, oh, touch and help me with Sister Sophia. Oh, Lord, do that. Blah, 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 blah. And the Lord would go, wait, stop, 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 stop. You've got to forgive those people. <gasps> Now, Lord, I've got a right to do and feel because sister so-and-so told me she understood why I felt that way. But the Lord said, no, you don't. You don't have a right because you are a child of mine and you've got to forgive those who do wrong against you. And I thought, well, Lord, they didn't come and ask forgiveness. He said, that's not what the word of God says anyway. If you feel that someone has something against you, then you need to go to them. Oh my. Well, that's not in my theology, Lord, but it should be because it's in the Word of God. It is in the Word of God. Needles that hurt. You are going to be hurt because the devil's going to make sure that somebody steps in front of you. So don't be planted by the, with all the, the weeds and everything. You know what? It will choke you out. It'll just choke it out. And you won't be good for anything. But I want to be among the roses. I don't want to just be there with the thorns and everything trying to bloom. Because my blooms won't even show up. But I want to be among the other beautiful flowers. The last thing is proper procedures. But others fell on good ground and brought forth fruit, and this is what I like, some a hundredfold, some sixtyfold, and some thirtyfold. You know what? You got to bloom where you're planted. Plant yourself and then bloom where you're planted. I don't care how much you're doing, but just do it. Amen. You know what? The Lord is the one that gives the increase. And we don't have to worry about that, but we just do what he tells us to do. And then we can receive great things from him. Verse 23, but he that receives seed into the good ground is he that heareth the word and understandeth it, which also beareth fruit and bringeth forth some a hundredfold, some sixty and some thirty. How many want to... Bloom where you're planted. Right. Amen. But there's things that we've got to do in order to bloom. And I want you to think of these things today. Are we bird food? Are we on shallow ground with the rocks? Are we in needles that hurt? But we've got to go by the proper procedures in order to see great and mighty things done in our lives. I believe that we're living in these last days, and I believe we're going to see great things from God. 
Do you mean miracles? Yes, I mean miracles. Do you mean maybe even people healed? Yes, I mean people healed. Do you know God's still in the business of raising people from the dead? Oh, I would love to see that. But you know what? We've seen so many people raised from the dead, the dead of sin. You know what? And that is death. That is death, but we've seen them rise above that. Isn't it an awesome thing? How many want to bloom where you're planted? And how many want to plant yourself where you can bloom? Praise God. I'm going to go ahead and turn it back over to my hubby. But I want you to think about that today. And ladies, as mothers, you've got, you've got the most important thing because those children, and even grandmothers, I know my grandkids... I want them to know about Jesus. And not just know about Jesus, but I want them to experience God. I'm going to tell them about the stories that me and my husband's had over the years about God's provision in our life. And you know what? Some people, they tell me, they go, I wish I had that story. You can have it too. But we've got to bloom where we are planted. We've got to be in the right place. And not be in... Yucky soil where you can't even do anything and you're just a plant that looks half dead. How many want to be something for God? Yes. You know what? I don't want to be anything in myself, but I want to do great for God and I want to serve Him. Praise God. Praise God. Get over there. Would you stand with me, please? Praise God kind of a new slant on when Cynthia kind of shared that with me, what she wanted to talk about. And you know, I'd really never thought about that, but after we become a child of God, you know, it talks about the seed is the word of God, and then the condition of the soil is our hearts and our receptivity to that, to the word of God. But then after we become a child of God, then it really is up to us what soil we are going to be associated with and where we're going to be. And I, I want to be fruitful for the Lord. I want to be fruitful. Do we, do we as Christians understand that that is the main purpose of why we are here on this earth, is to bear fruit. Now there's all kind of different fruit. Obviously there's a fruit of salvation, there's the fruit of the Spirit, there's the fruit of winning others to the Lord, there's the fruit of, of just growing in grace and, and in your relationship. The Bible talks much about fruit, and the Bible talks much about fruitlessness, just as this story does as well. And so even as Christians, a lot of times we we get so sidetracked by, you know, I want to do this, I want to accomplish this, I want to do this, I want to do this. But the bottom line is this, is it really, is it bearing fruit? Is it bearing fruit towards myself or is it bearing fruit to the glory of God? And so that's, that's a challenge that Cynthia has put forth to not just the ladies, not just the moms, the mothers, as precious as all of you are, but even, even to myself and every one of us. Church, in these last days, that if we want to be fruitful, and you know, I was kind of looking over my message. We're going to finish up on Joseph next week. Our last message, nine messages in that series. There's so many more that I could preach, but I just want to go to that point. And I want to have food for the family. But we got to be planted and we've got to be fruitful before we can actually have fruit to give to others that do not have. And so you've already stood, you've lifted your hands. But here's what I want to do today. Since this is Mother's Day, I would like for all of the ladies, would you come in around the front here with me? All of the, all of the sisters. 